warned him, don't do that one. <laughs> yeah, he goes, he says, yeah, it kills in comedy clubs, but I don't personally like the joke. I don't think it's that funny, right? And I think most people don't find it that funny. Like if it's to his crowd, then of course they're gonna f-ing laugh. Yeah. But look at where you're at. Time and place also matters a lot as a comedian. In five, four, three, two, one. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Genius Brain Podcast. We have Korean Jesus here himself. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> he went to the uh, Quest Crew Halloween party. Yeah. Uh, if you guys are in Los Angeles, Quest Crew, dance crew, of course, always throws a wild fucking Halloween party that's supposed to be like the shit. Their 17th annual? Yeah, they've been that's doing it. That's a long time. They've man. been doing it for a long ass yeah. time. Uh, I'm not a big fan of Halloween, not because I have anything against it. I just don't find it that fun. Yeah, um, I didn't grow up in a house where we dressed up and shit. Exactly. So, like, I kind of, we did, we talked about this. We do the Hallelujah Nights. Yeah. If you guys grew up in a Korean church or a church in general, I'm not sure if uh, outside of Korean churches you guys did this, <coughs> this as well. But we <laughs> we would do this thing called Hallelujah Nights, but you're not supposed to celebrate the devil. But they want us to participate in the idea of having candy. And so. Yeah, you can dress up, have candy and whatever, just. We're not going to be spooky about it. Exactly, yeah. right? So have our little dress of stuff, get fucking candy, and then they would do like church activity stuff, like community bonding stuff. Mm-hmm. And then we would do something called, uh, what do you call it, lock, what was it lock-in? A lock-in, yeah. Right, so, so. If it was a weekend or whatever, yeah. They would have um, adults at the church, and we would just like sleep in different rooms, set up our tents, our sleeping bags or whatever. Oh, you guys had tents in your church? Yeah, we had tents, sleeping bags, whatever whatever you wanted to do, and it was pretty Excuse fun. Me. <clears throat> Well, our church was pretty big, square footage rise. Mm-hmm. If we ever had a lock in, yeah, we would play hide and go seek. Yeah, it would be like scary shit. Oh, really? Yeah, because. <clears throat> oh, we would tell scary stories. Yeah, we would do that too. Like, I tell classic demon possession stories and stuff. But, um, do you, do you know the game Sardines? No. It's like reverse hide and go seek. So, um, one person goes and hides. Yeah, and the whole group is together, right? And this is the thing: our church, like, like I said, big square footage and all of that. So, the group has to go find this person, right? Yeah. And once you find them, you hide with them. Yeah. Right. And so the last person who finds them is the person who's gonna have to go out and hide next. It's oh, actually shit. pretty fun over time because you all have to yeah these and try to be like as quiet as you can. That is super fun. But then, like you know, I would we would cheat sometimes because me and my friends would like. <laughs> We get a tokarak or a chopstick, uh-huh. and we would break into like the storage closet because there's an, a ladder that accesses the roof. Yeah. So my friends and I would go up there and smoke cigarettes. And That's shit, so right? fucking funny. <laughs> and Poor like, Jesus. Yeah. It's like graffiti and shit. Jesus wants us to win. Yeah. That's so fucking funny. <clears throat> but last night, yeah, dude, it's like when I go to like one of Ryan's parties, it's like just professional dancing. <laughs> everybody it's, like, it's a jam every, it's a jam and i'm like what the fuck so the thing is too like um i happened to run into him at the japanese classic car show mm-hmm. and he was like dude come to the halloween party and he said bring your girl i don't think he knows i'm single mm-hmm. <laughs> so i was like well shit I, so i jumped on hinge and and i i got a i got a date had her come out kind of surprised each other with the costumes she came out. You seen Mean Girls, right? Yeah. She came with a actual scary costume. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> she was a Shinto priestess Kabuki style. So she had the face paint and everything, with the orange hair, with the handle. That's the... fucking crazy. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> And she had no idea what kind of party it was. All of a sudden, it's like fucking professional dancers flaring, doing backflips. Dude, one guy. I shouldn't say. No, okay. One guy was just getting it started. He was dressed as Charlie Brown. He was doing fucking flips and shit. Like getting. And this was early when it was just starting to get pumped up. This guy does a fucking one of those Captain America spins. On oh, Gainer. <laughs> yeah, and then when he comes down, ba, he hit the floor right, and he was. It was like Afro Ninja. Dude was like slow to get up, but he was getting up in a weird position with his like elbows, and then it was all he was. I was like, yo, that guy's concussed. Yeah. Killed the vibe. (laughs) Killed the vibe immediately. And everyone's just back to, all right, the the, the dance circle. It's like, hey, uh, let's just do regular dancing. (laughs) I went out for smoke and whatever. Holy shit, he concussed himself? Yeah. I mean, I saw him later. He looked fine. 
But he wasn't dancing again. Yeah, I wouldn't <laughs> dance either, dude. Charlie Brown just knocked himself out. <laughs> uh, by the way, uh, LA won the World Series. They beat the New York Yankees. That's why it took me forever to get here. And there was a big ass parade in LA today. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, I'll represent again. But you know what else is like sports these days is politics. Oh, yeah, dude, and... we, we, we got to talk about this because, like, it was so weird, right? So we're going to talk about Tony Hinchcliffe, right? Um, and then when they had the Republican uh, convention out in New York. Yeah. Crazy. The, the, it was a fucking crazy. It was How... Madison Square Garden. Yeah, it's insane. Not a whole lot of political people, you would think. I mean, in the middle of the city, too, you think, oh, it's so uh, liberal. Mm -hmm. in the It was, like, sold out. It was sold out. Everybody was there. Garden. It's Which just is a rally. Dude. Nuts. I mean, there was a lot of people that were there, right? And obviously, we're going to talk about Tony Hinchcliffe because it seems to be a huge controversial thing that happened. And, you know, my take on this was a little interesting, right? Number one, let's start with this conversation. They go, we have to defend Tony Hinchcliffe because people can't take a joke, right? It's just, it's just jokes. It's just comedy. That's that take, right? And that is actually, you know, for me... On this podcast, I always defend comedy all the time, right? But, and I think this might take people by surprise on this take because number one, I thought it was pretty tasteless, mm -hmm. right? And here's the reason why. I always defend comedy, but where do I defend it at? Comedy club. The comedy club, right? Because that is their space. This is where you get to try new things. You're experimenting with stuff and people are there to specifically laugh and hear some off color things here and there, right? When you're at the Republican, when you're in Madison Square Garden, knowing what you're going to say, right? And here's the other thing too, beyond all the stuff that I'm going to say, was the joke even that funny? It I, wasn't that funny. I didn't laugh. Most people too, when you read up on, on the online comments that are defending Tony Hinchcliffe, they're not even defending the joke. They're defending free speech. Yes. Yeah. They're not defending because they also know the joke wasn't that great. Yeah, it wasn't great. It wasn't a good joke. He didn't have do a good set, to be honest. It, it was, was a mix between yes, yes, our country's in trouble, you guys, and then some like off color like comment, right? And so here's the thing too, right? Um and I wonder what people's thoughts are on this. It's like as a co comedian, right? Most comedians, anyways, they're they're, they're you, you kind of have to be like a provocateur, mm -hmm. like you have to think outside the box and push these buttons and get people to think a little differently, and that's kind of what makes us laugh is these things that throw us off. But if you're just saying things for the sake of being shocking, are you really a comedian? Like I'm not not saying that Tony Hinchcliffe isn't a comedian, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. but I'm saying that we have now gotten to this idea of like, oh, because he's a comic, he could say whatever he wants, and that's not true. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. can say whatever you want, but you also have to be willing to take the consequences that comes with it. When your joke sucks, you don't get to dictate what people find funny or not. When you hear the joke, the Puerto Rico, the floating island of trash joke, right? It. You don't hear the ah, but the crowd wasn't even it laughing. It was like ooh, yeah, kind of thing. But then, like I accept it because that's Tony Hinchcliffe. Yeah, he's a roast dude. That's his whole shtick, right? Mm -hmm. Is 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 roasting? He's really good at that. In fact, he was really good at it at the Tom Brady roast. Mm -hmm. Um, John Stewart. Did you hear his comments on it? No, kind of defended Tony Hinchcliffe. Really, he was saying. I mean, in the in a funny way, because he was kind of, because there was so much to talk about about the rally and as a whole. But we're gonna focus on the Tony Hinchcliffe part. For him, he kind of like went over, but it was a good comparison because at this past week, Kamala Harris was in Houston, and she had Beyonce and fam, like her mom, yeah. her sister, uh, the other Destiny's child with a Kelly really Rowland? weird suit, oh, that okay. giant. I don't know what that was about. Um, but yeah, and his thing was, but they didn't sing. They just kind of gave their political thoughts and yeah. endorsements. But then you go over to MSG and they bring Tony Hinchcliffe, who you think he's going to, you're, they're calling him for his political ideology or for his jokes, jokes, right? And he went there and did what he did. Beyonce didn't sing, right? Yeah. And that's kind of the joke he made with it. Like, yo, he went there and he did what he does. Yeah. Whose fault is that, Tony's or the people who fucking booked him? <laughs> I think it's both. Like, I agree because with that. Because this is a political party and they're trying to reach America. Yeah. Right? But then you brought a guy who's saying something really polarizing and pushing away votes. Yeah. 
that's the dumbass part. Yes. That's the part where somebody's got to be like, they look, did you vet all these jokes? Yes. And you thought it was It was okay? a good idea? Yeah. Because that's the idea, right? They, they vetted the jokes. So, like, I, I, I agree to both. It's mm-hmm. like, yeah, who the fuck booked Tony Hinchcliffe? Who approved all these fucking jokes? Right? And you also know who he is and what he's yeah. going to do. I 100% agree with that. But the other part is, too, for Tony Hinchcliffe, if you are supporting this party, shouldn't you also think unselfishly... Am I helping? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, that's the other thing, too. It's like people are also taking away the personal responsibility part, too. Yeah. It's like this. People know who I am, right? I also roast a lot, too. Mm-hmm. My father dies. I go to speak about him. Am I going to be like, hey, this fucking little loser? You know, <laughs> yeah. am I going to make jokes? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like people also take away the personal responsibility part too. It's like, well, he's a comedian. He's going to say what he's going to say. That's also stupid. He's also somebody who's for the party. So you should do things accordingly to support your party. Yeah. yeah so where's yeah. that accountability as well? That's the part that I don't agree with. You, two things can be true at once, right? I 100% agree. Whoever vetted those jokes, you're dumb. You should yeah. be fired immediately. Right. The fact that you thought that Tony Hinchcliffe wasn't going to do what Tony Hinchcliffe does. But there's also a sign for Tony Hinchcliffe. It's like for him, he's like, you guys don't know what jokes are. No, we know what fucking jokes are, but we also know what bad jokes are, too. And also, do you not realize that Puerto Ricans are Americans? Exactly. (laughs) What the fuck are you talking about? And I guess if we were to give context to the Tony Hinchcliffe thing, right, it's that uh, Puerto Ricans in Puerto Rico, they have a huge issue with. Land, their landfills mm. so that's where the joke stems yes, from yes and then i was listening to the rogan podcast i saw that clip too Just oh there's a clip bit, on it yeah. right and joe rogan was talking about i don't think it's a good joke either yeah like he, he like he warned him don't do that one <laughs> yeah he goes he says yeah it kills in comedy clubs but i don't personally like the joke i don't think it's that funny right mm-hmm. and i think most people don't find it that funny like if it's to his crowd then of course they're gonna fucking laugh yeah but look at where you're at Time and place also matters a lot. As a comedian, time and place is fucking everything. And when you say place, not just all Madison Madison Square Garden, Trump rally, Republican Party, but New York, where the Puerto Ricans are Exactly. At. There are no Puerto Ricans in Austin. I mean, sure there are. Yeah. But that's like Mexican country, you yeah. know? Like, where are, are all the Puerto Ricans when you're making that It's like joke? East Coast. Yeah. Right, which is so interesting. So, like, I'm, I'm curious to see how people view this right like i said i watch kill tony funny fucking show i want those jokes that kill tony in comedy situations roast whatever the fuck that it is his concerts however i love the concept of that show because it gets people to just gather their fucking guts and tell their jokes yeah worst jokes in them whether it's good or bad or whatever the fuck that it is right and then you get to work it out and that is the perfect environment like that's what i think that's that's what you call quote unquote holy yeah a sanctuary for like let that shit work yeah out. uh because tony hinchcliffe years past was in trouble for his peng yeah penguin the, <laughs> sorry i don't know i remember that guy. peng wang peng yeah uh some chinese jokes once again did i think it was funny no in the context of why he was doing it there um i get it but that once again it's in the comedy space yeah where that works where it was supposed to be a no phones Mm-hmm. Event and somebody used their phone specifically to try to cancel him. Exactly, you and know? that's what I—that's what we did. I think we talked about it on the podcast. Didn't was, we? I think that was you and PK. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, we, it was PK and some. You know, PK was like defending him and stuff like that. And I, I understand his perspective as well. But like I said, I will not agree with somebody who is a appear in a space who's a comic mm-hmm. when you could have just done a set and talked about it or talked to him afterwards but instead you were like i'm gonna get this guy canceled and you hid your phone and you recorded it mm. that's some pussy shit and i'm not gonna back down from that yeah, yeah. I, I still agree that that's some pussy ass shit doesn't make us look good as asian people doesn't make com- comedy look good and then he did it on uh asian heritage month or something exactly like just to, timed it so perfectly it a, yeah. yeah so I, I still don't agree with that like you know it's like there are things that bother me about Tony Hinchcliffe you know that personally give me a bias against him the same way there's a bias for me against Trump Mm -hmm. like I try to sit down and listen to the uh, flagrant podcast Mm -hmm. with him I just don't like fucking hearing him talk yeah then I try to listen to the Rogan I don't the way like the way he fucking talks yeah right so I'm already biased I get yeah but I'm in control of my emotions yeah 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 I don't have to be fucking mad for somebody else yeah yeah a lot of people don't because you hate Trump so much you will leech that into you might have never heard of Tony Hinchcliffe and now you just hate this motherfucker yeah 
right? No, exactly. So it's like, and now you're like so offended for Puerto Ricans and you've never met one in your family. Yeah, life. like you just, you're already yeah. there. That's you're where right? we need to be like, where's your discernment? Let's yeah. take your emotions out of this with how you're going to make the decisions and how you're going to control yourself. Yeah, and I could, like I said, the Kill Tony show is so, it's fucking hilarious. Yeah. I watch it actually a lot. And having said that, like, it was a bad joke. It That's all bad. that it is. <laughs> Let's just boil it down to what it is. It was not a good joke, right? Yeah. You, it's not about defending comedy and free speech. That's just stuff you're tacking on to just, because you're so in love with Trump, yeah. right? That you want this joke to work. But the crowd didn't like it. The mo majority of people didn't like it. And most people didn't even defend the joke. And if your only thing that you're tacking on is like freedom of speech, that's not what this is about. Yeah. It's about this guy who is a comic, number one, whoever hired him and screened his joke is a fucking idiot. So Tony Hinchcliffe is going to do what Tony Hinchcliffe does. But that still doesn't excuse the fact that Tony Hinchcliffe, as somebody who is a vetted comic... And that supporting this man would do something that yeah, dumb to that, hurt to hurt his campaign. Yeah, that's what it boils down to. These are two separate fucking conversations. Right. Genius Brain listeners, this podcast is brought to you by Better Help. Better Help has been a longtime sponsor of the Genius Brain podcast because I use it. And look, if you need somebody to talk to or somebody to hear you out, that's not in your immediate circle. You just need a fresh perspective sometimes, or maybe you don't even have that. That's where Better Help comes in. I always have, and I always have Better Help in my back pocket and listen shout outs to my therapist because this month is all about gratitude and along with the person i just shouted out there's another person we don't get to thank enough and guess what that's ourselves that's you baby it's sometimes hard to remind ourselves that we are trying our best to make sense of everything and in this crazy world that it just isn't easy here's a reminder to send some thanks to the people in your life including yourself and look, I've benefited from therapy for a very long time, and you can too. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Let the gratitude flow with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash genius today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash genius. It's just a weird thing. And look, here's the thing. Even two after this, right? Of course. When I saw that shit, I'm like, oh, now the, the left, like Dems, they got something. This is going to be good for them. Mm -hmm. Then Biden comes on. <laughs> <laughs> and then Biden, old Papa, is rambling. Calling people garbage? He, so he literally said, he goes, he goes, uh, you know, he was with reference to the Puerto Rican joke about him calling garbage. He goes, the only people that are garbage are people who support Trump. <laughs> <laughs> That's. And I, and I remember <laughs> watching. Essentially, it's funny. <laughs> yeah. When he said that, I went. <laughs> dude just like shooting him yeah i was like kamala had it in the bag yeah. why would you say that and i'm just like and then you know obviously he's older we already know we're not gonna yeah. even debate this he's like he's like i don't, I don't he's like, hey i don't know what's going on with him talking about people in puerto rico <laughs> but you know people in puerto rico texas i was like puerto rico texas <laughs> Come on. Yeah, come on. Come on. Hey. Puerto Rico, Texas. Hey, you know, Puerto Rico, Texas. It's like, Puerto Rico, Texas? Where the fuck is that, Biden? And then he goes, only people who support Trump, uh, the only people that are garbage people who support Trump. It's like, why did you do that? You just did, you're the Tony Hinchcliffe yeah. of the left now. Yeah. Why did you do that? <laughs> I'm just like sitting here like, dude, this is a fucking shit but show. But that's the funny thing, though. We all know, like we said, Biden not being of his right mind and Tony is yeah but if you see the rest of the msg rally the other people who spoke after him because he was the opener were psychopaths dude there was psycho psychopaths were that were saying horrible shit. horrible things too dude the one person i forgot who it was i you know if you guys could write in the comments just to let people know he ended his speech with I didn't listen to all it was a lot it's a six hour fucking event yeah, right yeah, yeah. so I just kind of skipped through a few things and I also I also watched the Democratic one as well it was just like he said something he said something about Kamala he, it was something very unsafe oh he said he goes we got to get Kamala and her pimp handlers out of here it's like did you just call the vice president a fucking prostitute you yeah. fucking piece of shit and this is what this is the conversation that happens right because I know everybody thinks I'm super pro Trump I'm not I'm just talking this it's, it's the rhetoric that this group of people have that probably misrepresents a lot of good people in this group, mm -hmm. right? Because the, I, the one of the biggest complaints that people have about Trump is that he emboldens people who have very sick ideals. Somebody on that national convention decided to call Kamala Harris, not directly, but indirectly, a fucking prostitute. Yeah. And I, with every bit of my being, I fucking hate that shit. 
And that happened in 2016 at a Bernie Sanders rally. Lisa Ling's husband. Have you ever met that guy? Mm-hmm. Six foot eight, like Korean dude. He's a doctor. He's just, yeah. It's, I've never seen a guy like him yeah. before. He's a giant. But he was supporting Bernie and his wife is supporting Hillary. Now, at the rally that he was speaking at with for Bernie, like um, he was calling, like because at that time before Trump, Bernie was the outsider. He doesn't work like other politicians. Yeah, right. He was the independent before he joined the Democratic Party, and so Lisa Ling's husband like called some this and that the whores of Washington D.C. in passing. Da 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 da. And then, like, because he was one of the openers, too, before Bernie came out to speak. And, yeah, he had to step out of Bernie's campaign. His wife had to make a whole statement. I'm sure he was in the doghouse. But then, like, with Republicans, they don't care. Yeah, I mean, like. They don't give a shit. It's free speech. Trump had to, like, separate himself from those comments as well, too. Yeah. And then Kamala had to separate himself from Biden's comments. And, like, the thing what she said about Biden, too, she goes, we all know what he really meant when he said that. I was like, no, it's pretty straightforward what he mm-hmm. said. Right. But it, it also doesn't bode well for that side because there was this whole narrative that the left was saying or, or you know, people who are Dems, like Biden is perfectly fine. Like he's all straight in the head. He's the sharpest he's ever been. And it's like, we don't have to play pretend here. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like you don't have to do that because when they do that, it makes you feel like you're calling the American public stupid. Mm-hmm. Right. And they, but obviously they have to, right. Because he is the, he's still the president of the United States, but just to hear him say that it's like, dude, but if you just, why did you do that? dude? Mm-hmm. Like now it's even, <laughs> right it's like tony hitchcliffe said this shit biden said some dead. now it's like pink and then news comes and goes so fast like i didn't know about the garbage thing because it was just in passing yeah i didn't know it was and then like some other news is gonna come up immediately and within the days before the election I guarantee you some other person's gonna come out and say kamala touched my dick you know or some shit something. you know what yeah. i mean and i don't like i i don't wish like, she didn't not me i'm just yeah like, yeah we're example just... yeah yeah Yeah. And so, you know, the other argument to the other side, too, just to give people something to think about is like, well, Tony Hinchcliffe goes and says these unsavory things. Well, these people on the left are calling Donald Trump a fascist, uh, um, a a cop. They call him a fascist. They call him Hitler. They call him Nazi. Nazi. They call the MSG rally a Nazi rally. It's like, yeah. Former people who used to work for uh, Trump are saying that he does have fascist ideals, all this other stuff that's happening right now. And like for me, I'm just... That's right. His former um, secretary, secretary yeah, Matt Mathis said he was a fucking dumbass. John Kelly yeah. came out with the New York Times saying he has fascist yeah. ideals. Yeah, all of that. You know, and this this whole thing is is so insane because now I feel like the idea of their campaign isn't to talk about what good they'll do. It's talking about what shit what a shit job the other person is doing. And we have somebody like they're they're now openly just like cursing. Yeah. Right? Uh, Tim Waltz was calling Elon Musk a dipshit. I was like, <laughs> oh shit, are we cursing now? I mean, but I, I would put that on Trump. I yeah. think he started that in 2016. Yeah. Know? I think that whole, you know, started calling something shithole and then all of a sudden, when he calls uh, Africa and other nations shithole countries. Yeah. Because the president said it on CNN, they're like, quote, shithole countries. Mm-hmm. And then on SNL, the president said, quote, shit whole country so it's like at the same time you love it because the president said it now you can quote him and allows you to say it that's the, that's the thing that i think a lot of people don't like about trump right yeah. it's like what he represents in terms of that right he emboldens the, he em, he emboldens the worst part about people yeah right whether he agrees with those people or not whether or not his ideals link up with it how they interpret it, what he says it it causes this nastiness right and that was my four years in washington i was there when he was elected and then i left a year before the 2020 election and i saw it i saw this boldness of these people just come back and just say that's right you don't belong here good thing trump's president he's gonna kick you out Mm -hmm. right and trump just said recently at the msg thing like that's what i call nazi race i am going to deport the most amount of illegals in american history 
right? And people are like, oh, clutching their pearls at that. Yeah. You know what I say? Good luck. <laughs> you can't beat Obama's record. Yeah. Because when Obama, people forget, man, like if you're Korean or any, you know, Latino, any immigrant, you, in those Obama years, when he first got into office, because the economy was fucking yeah. in the shit and he came in, what's the first thing he started doing? Was deporting people. Anyone's overstaying their visas first. Like I had, you know, coworkers like had to leave. All we, I, I legally changed my name yeah. because of that. Like there was all this, because there was people who were born in the United States that were getting deported. Yeah. Which was fucking crazy. And that was all Obama years. Yeah. He has the record for the most <laughs> deportation. So this is all this like he says, she said type yeah. of stuff too, right? It's like, well, Trump has to thank this person for their stuff because it trickled over into his stuff. And then it's like, well, we could use that argument for everybody then, mm -hmm. right? We could always go back to the other previous president and the other, uh, the previous presidencies to be like, well, the reason why you benefited this is because of that. The reason why because of this is because of that. Yeah. And like for me as a layman on the outside, like I'm reading all this negative shit and the positive stuff that they want to do is like a afterthought. Mm -hmm. Right. For seemingly from one of the stuff that I'm reading is all tabloids, all everything else. And like, you know, we talked about this too, where, you know, I had a conversation with a buddy um, and it, it didn't go very well because, you know, you say you should never talk about politics with friends. Right. Especially for somebody like me who, number one, I'm very open that I don't know much about anything. Right. I can only recant the stuff that I'm reading about in passing here. Yeah. And there, right. And that's the best <laughs> that's I can do. the best we can do in the internet age. We're actually getting a lot of information. Yeah. It's almost, okay? so give us a fucking break. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a lot. Right? Yeah. And so, you know, what happens is like when you talk about politics with somebody who is very passionate about what they do and you're very lackadaisical about it for someone like me, I, it's not that I don't care. It's just like, I'm just trying to understand, right? So if I so think you're in control of your emotional aspect of it, because this is an important decision, I assume you're not going to make an emotional decision out of it. I just don't, I, I don't want to do that. Yeah. Right. And you know, when people look at how I speak about certain things, when it comes to a topic, I don't understand. I ask a lot of questions, but when you are somebody who is already cement in your own ideals, sometimes asking questions sounds like an attack on your beliefs, <laughs> right? So it'll be like, oh, well, what did, well, the other side says this. What do you think about that? Oh, fuck them. It's like, who, who are you talking to right now? Yeah. Right. Are you talking to them or are you talking to me? Because if you're talking to me like that, we're going to fight. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. So the answer was fuck them. You know, Google says something else. Yeah. I don't know, bro. <laughs> yeah. And look, you know, when I had a conversation with a buddy of mine, you know, we ended it really peacefully. We dapped it up. We both apologized. I raised my voice. I told him to shut the fuck up. I said all this other shit. Um, and he got mad. He raised his voice. And, you know, it seemingly to him, he felt like he was really calm. But it's like, you can't be calm about stuff that you hate. Like, yeah. we feel it. It's, it that, that vitriol just spills out and it comes into me. Mm. And so, you know, we had a disagreement on. What we were talking, it was so stupid just listening back to what we were saying about, we were talking about two separate things yeah. and we just couldn't meet in the fucking middle. Right. And I was trying to get him to understand, like, we're not talking about the same topic. And I think for him, and I had a couple of other people listening to it too, they thought we were both dumb, which is right. <laughs> but the one thing that they both agreed on was that it seemingly like he was talking about something that you weren't talking about and you were trying to get him to understand, I don't give a fuck about the political talk. I'm talking about this. Yeah. And so the, the conversation was, like I said, we were both stu so stupid. It was um, about, um, he made a statement that Trump is now becoming more like Biden, right? Where he's losing his mental faculties, okay? And then for me, I was like, that's a bit of a hyperbole. I don't think he's like Biden, Yeah. right? He did a three and a half hour podcast talking with Joe Rogan and it was completely coherent, mm -hmm. right? It's coherent in the sense of what he is, Yeah. yeah right? Yeah. It, it, <laughs> how he spoke 10 years ago is how he speaks now. So if you thought he was dumb then and dumb now, I agree, <laughs> <laughs> All right? <laughs> right? But he's not losing his, his faculty. Exactly. Yeah. So He I, might lose his bowels. You yeah. can argue that. You can argue he might wear a diaper, but then like when you can see it i like i hate the motherfucker too but i'm not gonna say oh he's not fit to be president because that's what they were saying in 2016 yeah because of his rambling mm -hmm. you know but that's his speaking strategy yeah. apparently he you he, know? he goes on tangents yeah. 
right? So he, this is what, how he'll do it. He'll he'll mention somebody. He goes, oh, what do you think about Putin? Let me tell you something about Putin. Yeah, great, little, little, yeah. He's not thinking about what he's saying. Yeah, he goes, great family, yeah. great kids. You know, I went and I shot some ducks with him, right? Ducks are very delicious. He just goes on these tangents and then he raps back later. Did you see the piece on uh, last week tonight? Mm-mm. He said to speak like Donald Trump. You know, the when you're typing, texting in iPhone, mm-hmm. they're the middle bar has guesses what your next what word. your next word is so you just hit that da, 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 da. over and over and over and then it's pretty amazing that's how trump talks yeah he go, <laughs> he, he does goes. word connections yeah and then he'll somehow wrap back if you say like hey can you go back he goes got it and he goes back yeah, to yeah. it but that's that's how he oh if you go back to his old interviews when he was like in his 30s yeah that's how he spoke but and then you would be like okay why because he's a bullshit artist <laughs> okay that's what i also say like stop getting mad over the fact that he tells lies dude you don't have to count anymore we get it I'm, you don't have to be mad that he's a you think he's a racist we get it he's a fucking racist so okay? he he has this thing of like his um <laughs> i made this connection. i started laughing at night i don't know if it was out high but it was like <laughs> this fool tells stories like steven seagal mm. he's very much like steven seagal yeah. <laughs> and i and i connected it when he was talking about the story about putin right and he's like let me tell you something joe that we would have never gone to war you know and it, when I was talking to Putin, I walked up to him and I went and I said to him, I said, listen here, Putin. <laughs> like, yeah. it's like, it's like, I close my eyes and I'm like, is this Steven Seagal? Yeah. Or is it Trump? He tells like, stories like fucking Steven yeah. Seagal, dude. Oh, wow. And I'm like, dude, this guy loves himself so fucking much. He's the hero in all of his fucking stories, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now, having said that, these are many reasons why I don't like him, right? But for me as a person to think like, okay, then why is half of the country feels like he's going to be the savior right there has to be a reason half of this country millions of people can't be bigots racist dumbasses or whatever yeah not like it's not you, you just can't be like, oh you're so dumb that da, da, da. like i remember i right on my way here when i left washington i stopped by portland because jason flew in to ride with me down to la when i was moving here and we met up with a DTS dude that we were yeah, yeah, yeah. with. So I'm, I recognize that guy. But it's been years and then we're catching up. I don't know why the conversation goes to this, but it goes to how he's going to vote for Trump. And I'm fresh out of the gas station. Yeah. And I'm, my blood is boiling. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. shaking. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, if you do, I can't help but think that you're a piece of shit. Yeah, yeah. Remember, this guy's a missionary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I think... You're a piece of shit. I think you're going to hell. Yeah. I think you're a fake fucking Christian. Yeah. I think you're the reason why I stopped being a Christian because of fake motherfuckers like you who mm-hmm. vote for Trump and you think it's God ordained. And I said some some mean shit yeah, to yeah, his yeah. face. And he was hosting me. You yeah. know? <laughs> it's like, so do you want dinner or? <laughs> no, we were having dinner. <laughs> oh, wow, wow. Jason's sitting there like, because he understood. He was watching all of my stories of the yeah. abuse I'm taking. Yeah. You know? But I'm like, you know, and I, I look back, like, was that cool? No, 100% not cool. Um, do I understand myself? Because I was so fresh out of actual pain that I was projecting onto saying this was Donald Trump's fault. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's a lot of things I have to get a handle of myself, especially a lot of us going through pen- after post-pandemic, right? with what we are in control of especially emotionally like yeah I, said, I hate trump yeah but i'm not gonna <laughs> like yeah because also if someone too, says they're voting for trump it doesn't like yeah. there's no conversation right yes and i think sometimes too like when you're so emotionally involved you say well i was just trying to have a regular conversation but when you look back at it, it's like no i wasn't I, I, I wanted them to believe everything that I said. I wanted them to know that they were a piece of shit. Yeah. And it's like, then that's not an open conversation, right? And I think for us, in our case, like for me, I didn't like take into the consideration of how much he hates this guy, mm-hmm. right? And even if he doesn't, it's like, you're not doing a good job of, te- of showing it then, <laughs> right? So for us, like it, it got into this thing where- like, Because it wasn't even about what you're talking now it's like who's gonna win this argument that's what it felt like it right? wasn't even about and you know to his defense too yeah. he felt that it wasn't like that he just felt like i he was like why can't you move past this thing and i'm like we're not moving past this thing because this is a conversation that we're having and i'm 
we're because we haven't met a, a middle ground. Yeah, we can't move past this. Yeah, because we have to at least come. It's like we're. He's like we can just agree to disagree. I was like we're not even disagreeing on the same thing, so we can't move past this. <laughs> there is nothing to, we're disagreeing on. The subject matter is here and here. So before we move past this, we at least have to be here. Is what I was trying to get at. Yeah, and I think like because the emotions were so high, we were just having two separate conversations. This reminds me of uh, the incident I had at Safeway in Washington. Um, I, I told the story before, but I was trying to get some like Chinese food or something at the deli in a mm -hmm. Vaughn's Safeway supermarket. And then I hear, you know, if you want the general soap chicken, yeah, 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 yeah. Eight thirty nine, And I was like, oh shit, there's a Chinese lady that works here. It's a legit Chinese food. And then it was just some white lady, but she was doing a really good accent. And then in my, like, I, I feel myself shaking and I'm upset and I'm angry. And obviously I'm triggered because, like, I grew up with that shit. Someone's just mocking. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and I just wanted to go and start some shit, you know. And so when I went up there with my anger, I was like, even though it's clearly I'm angry in my face, yeah. I said the most professional thing. I said... Do you talk like that all the time? Because if that's your accent, then I can't be mad at you. But if you're doing that right now, you should stop doing that. Yeah. And then the argument became, what? You can't tell me what to do. This First Amendment, right? It's always speech. somebody's response, yeah. Right? Now, she was felt like she was being attacked. So she was arguing about free speech. And now I'm like, you work at Safeway. You're wearing a Safeway uniform and you're serving food yeah. like, like what's the problem yeah. don't do that yeah you know like if you did that at home football sunday i bet it fucking kills or a comedy so, club yeah it would kill because you're so good at it yeah not at safeway at the fucking chinese food deli all right yeah and that's like the argument it wasn't going anywhere to the point where it was like oh i'm walking away yeah and it was she she I didn't say it at all, but she thought I was calling her a racist. Yeah. But I was saying, as professional, don't do that at work. Yeah. Internally, yes, I was upset. I didn't say it, though, because I was yeah. going to be professional. But what happened? She read my anger. Yeah. Behind what I was saying, She, my emotions to her felt like I was calling her a racist. Yeah. A dirtbag. I think that's what happened in that conversation. Yeah. Exactly. And so as I walked away, she was like, I'm not a racist. I don't hate anyone. Yeah. I love everyone. And I could love you too. So I turned around and I walked right up to her and I was like, can I give you a hug? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah. she just started hugging and out in the middle of Safeway. She's crying. <laughs> and people were just shoulder. like, these two fags. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just fucking hugging over chow mein, dude. Yeah. Bunch of fucking losers. It's, it's so ridiculous that we were, well, that's what we were fighting over. But she's like, now she's crying in my arms in the middle of Safeway. And I, was, I had to reassure her. I was like, you're not a racist. I'm not calling you a racist. Okay? Yeah. I love you too. I believe you. You're not a racist. And she's like, oh, I'm so sorry. But like, that's, that's what it is too though, right? Like, and that also goes into the fact of what we're talking about, Tony Hinchcliffe. Yeah. Time and place. Time and place. Right? Like in, in and of itself, that thing is not offensive, right? It's mm -hmm. funny. But if you did it with your friends or whatever, or you're doing it at a comedy club, but how people interpret what you do is also very important. Now we could go as, as it's like, well, what I say and how you take it is however you feel, right? Yeah. But- you're also working in a professional setting, right? <laughs> I think that's the other nuance that people don't really think about, yeah. right? Because if I, let's say, I, I don't know, I'm at a fucking Jumbies investor meeting, right? And I talk about the massive shit I had today, yeah. right? <laughs> probably very unprofessional, right? Did I have it? I can have this conversation with other people, but it's probably not appropriate here. Yeah, yeah, and it's, and it's yeah. okay for people to be like, what the fuck? Why are you telling us about this type of stuff? I get it. <laughs> and that's the thing, like nobody wants to take personal responsibility. They think personal responsibility is only on the person who gets offended. Yeah. It's also upon the you the person who said the offensive thing and for comics too it just because you say something wild and offensive it doesn't mean that it's funny yeah yeah that's what people are forgetting just because you said off-color things it doesn't mean people are obligated to laugh and be like it's just a joke because now if you're just saying stupid shit just to say stupid shit you're just a fucking provocateur yeah. all you are is a troll you're just a troll that's all you're doing <laughs> i don't get it <laughs> speaking of trolls you hear about johnny somalia do you know that guy 
Oh yeah, that guy in the, Korea. Oh, he's in Korea now. He got his ass whooped by a former Korean special forces dude. <laughs> See this on the street. <laughs> it's because he thought it was Japan. No, no, no. <laughs> that, that's true. It's like because okay. he was doing that shit in Japan. Yeah, he was doing it in Japan, but Japan's public culture, like Americans, take advantage of this so much, and it sucks because Jackass took advantage of Japan by doing that. Yeah, they were like oh, they're filming laws. You can film anything. And yeah, Japanese people will won't say anything. Yeah, so Not the Korean. first Jackass movie, they they did all that j- crazy shit. Uh, Logan Paul, we yeah, all know yeah, about yeah. that. <laughs> and then now we got Johnny Somalia. Now, this guy trolling around or whatever, he got punched. He got sucker punched in Japan. Yeah, just like a light punch. In the yeah, face. but when he got to Korea, he went over there and was started mocking the comfort woman statue. Uh oh. He kissed it. He sat on her lap. He rode her. He's gonna die. He molested the yeah. statue. Yeah. And so, and he's saying, "What's up, Korea? I'm here. Here's my location." And then, and then you see this Korean dude fucking shaky kick him, and then one is, and then he fucking runs away. There's a whole clip, dude. Yeah. And then there's another Korean <laughs> recording. He's like, "Oh, legend, oh, legend, legend." <laughs> they they fucking beat the shit out of him. And then here's what fucked up. So they've been getting attacked like all week. Yeah. Right. The Korean news. They are taking all of those clips. And they're blurring out the Korean faces and showing his, his face. face to say this guy's causing trouble. Yeah, get him. Get him. Yeah. Like, yo. That's a funny thing, too. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys understand. Southeast Asian countries don't play that shit. Dude, you see the, the transgender wars down there? Dude, like, I saw this clip of this dude in Thailand. Yeah. Funny, like, I'll fuck you up like that. Everybody got up. They had fucking chairs, knives, yeah, and he was—he yeah, yeah. literally saw his life. He goes, "No, no, 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 no!" I was like, "You were going to die, like you were literally not even as a joke. They were actually going to kill you. Yeah, like it wasn't going to be like some like lightweight, like don't do that, you know, wag your finger type of shit. They were going to kill you." Then th- there was a, a video with a bouncer like kicking the shit out of a dude. Like I think they had to put him in a coma recently dude i hope like harassed i hope that fool gets gets fucking obliterated in korea like and it's very possible korean people have very short tempers Mm -hmm. and once they figure out what you're fucking doing you're pretty much dead i'll 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 be clear though this is this is the funny part of the age we live in i'm not cool with some of those koreans like calling him the n-word oh let's not do that not cool but I am totally cool with the, you know, the, the tracking him down, you and know, beating his ass, beating his ass. But don't call him the N word when you do it. All right, it's yeah. not because he's black. Okay? Yeah, it's because he's because a fucking he's a idiot. Troll. Yeah, right. Yeah, and then going back to, you know, what we're saying, trolls these days don't see their comeuppance, right? Yeah, they get away with fucking everything, dude. It's so Anonymity fucking annoying. does that, right? Mm. But someone who's going to be as bold or stupid as Johnny Somalia. Or Somali, Johnny Somali, I don't know what his name is, but to show his face, his name, and his location, it's like he wanted it to happen to get those views. Too. Yeah. He wanted it to happen because now he's like the talk of an entire country, you know? So at the same time, we look at that and we say, oh, are we feeding into it? Are we buying into it? Is this what we want? So when Trump has a Tony Hinchcliffe and then, blah, all these things happen. So did you see um, the WWE, uh, the Mr. McMahon documentary yet? Yes. Now, what you realize is like the baby face and the heel, right? Good guy, bad guy, right? In terms of like where it, when you're a superstar, it doesn't matter because there was one point where they were saying with John Cena, right? If the crowd says, you know, Let's go, Cena. And then right after, the other side of the crowd goes, Cena sucks. Yeah. Let's go, Cena. Cena sucks. Yeah. And they say, John Cena says, ooh, I feel bad for my opponent because nobody's talking about him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Both sides are talking about one guy. Yeah. And that's the same way with Floyd Mayweather. You're watching him to win or you're watching him to lose. You yeah. don't care whose opponent is. And then they, he's going to make. I mean, they're oh. doing their damn job, yeah. man. So, so do we do we fall into that trap with Trump saying any publicity is good publicity? I mean, we'll we see once the selection is over. Get into it. Right. Because this, you know, we'll see what's going to happen. Right. I don't think it's going to be the end of the world. But I, I hope that, you know, America can keep their heads heads together. Whatever the decision is, I, I just hope it's not going to go into disaster because it looks makes us look bad as a country. Yeah, if we have another January 6th, ah. 
bullshit. Kamala wins. Like, please. Like, no, we're not, not doing that. And I hope like President Trump will, knowing this, will be like, don't do this. Mm. Right? Just it, nip it in the bud. Yeah. I think there's no way you could have it happen a second time. Yeah. There's I no think way. people are going to die if they yeah. do. So, well, guys, uh, that wraps up this episode of the Genius Brain Podcast. You can catch Genius Brain every Sundays at 12 p.m. And uh, you can catch Ed at Ed Park VP, Bible Study at Momo. And we'll see you all next time. Peace. Peace.